Hi, I'm Jen Fosfag. I'm a clinical psychologist and an assistant professor at the Seaver Autism Center, and I'm going to talk today about biomarkers. A biomarker is defined as a measurable indicator of a biological process, which could either be normative or a marker of some disease state or an atypical process or function. We think of biomarkers as more sensitive and reliable measures linking what we can see, such as behavior, to what's actually going on in the body, like in the genes or in the brain. You might be wondering why people are interested in biomarkers for autism. At the moment, autism is diagnosed as a function of observable behavior. That means that diagnosis is subjective, dependent on what clinicians and caregivers observe and interpret. At the same time, though, we know that autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder, meaning that it's caused by things that are happening in the brain, at least in part as a result of a person's combination of genes. However, we don't have a good way to look at the brain to tell whether it has autism. A biomarker can be a kind of readout, like doing a blood test to measure white blood cell count as an index of immune response. In the case of autism, a biomarker would be a measurable characteristic that could tell us more objectively about the state of someone's brain, so whether it has autism, what kind of autism, or how severe their autism is. Biomarkers can have several different uses. I'll talk briefly about five of them. First, biomarkers can be used for diagnosis. Right now, we diagnose autism based on interviews, questionnaires, and structured interactions. All of these tools, though, are subjective and prone to error. A biomarker could be useful for helping us make more objective and accurate diagnoses that are consistent from clinician to clinician and from person to person. Second, and relatedly, biomarkers can be used for stratification. Right now, we use autism spectrum disorder as a sort of umbrella term for people on the autism spectrum. Despite two people having very different symptoms, we still give them the same diagnosis. What we think, though, is that autism, or ASD, is not one thing, but many. There are several kinds of autism that we just don't have good definitions for yet. One thing a biomarker could be useful for is helping us to define the different types of autism to make more specific and precise diagnoses. Third, biomarkers can be used to measure response to treatment. If a treatment is working, you should see a change in the level of a biomarker, like reduction of white blood cell count when an infection is treated. If there's no change in the biomarker and the biomarker is a good one, this will mean the treatment isn't working. In autism, this can be useful to determine how well either a medicine or a behavioral therapy is working. In the context of a clinical trial where researchers are testing a new treatment, a biomarker can help us know if the treatment is a promising one and can help trial sponsors in the government know whether to invest in the treatment further. Relatedly, biomarkers can also be used to measure early efficacy of a treatment. Sometimes treatments can take months or even years to work. A biomarker might let us know in the first days or weeks whether the treatment is likely to work if the patient sticks with it. If not, it can save precious time, allowing the patient to shift gears and try something different. Finally, biomarkers can be useful for helping to decide on the front end who should get which treatment. In other words, they can be useful for personalized medicine. Different doses of a treatment, or different treatments altogether, might be more effective for different people. Biomarkers can be useful for telling us which people are which, so that we get it right from the start. Importantly, we don't have biomarkers for any of these five purposes in autism yet, but there's a lot of research being done to find them, including by the team here at Seaver. A good biomarker has several key features. First, it ought to be objective, meaning that it's unbiased and not subject to influence from things like who's taking the measurement or how well they know the person or how experienced they are as a clinician. Second, it ought to be reliable. It should be the same whether I measure it or someone else does. Assuming there's no change in someone's autism, it should be the same today, tomorrow, and next week. Third, it ought to be quantifiable. We ought to be able to obtain some numerical value that can be compared against others and against a person's own levels over time and across treatment. Finally, it ought to be sensitive. In other words, if something changes in the brain or if behavior improves or worsens, the biomarker ought to change too. A few other characteristics are ideal in the context of autism biomarkers. We want biomarkers that are feasible. We want to be able to obtain them from infancy through adulthood, and people who have a lot of language and those who have none, in a top-notch research center, but also in pediatricians' offices and even in people's homes. We also want biomarkers to be scalable. We want them to be inexpensive and available enough that anyone can access them, and we want them to be robust enough that they give good measurement no matter who is collecting them or where. Here at Seaver, much of our research focuses on biomarkers for autism. Because autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder, we focus on biomarkers that are related to brain function. For example, we use electrophysiology, such as visual and auditory evoked potentials, and eye tracking, where we measure where people look when shown pictures of faces, or how their pupils respond to flashing lights. 
These measures have many of the features of good biomarkers. They're objective, they're quantifiable, they're feasible, and they're scalable. At the center, we're currently testing how sensitive and reliable they are. In addition, we're looking at whether biomarkers are effective in our clinical trials. We're testing whether biomarkers we're developing at the center are sensitive to which kids improve with treatment. And we're planning to look at whether biomarkers can help us predict which kids will respond well to treatment before the treatment is even administered. The Autism Research Field is excited about biomarkers, and I hope I've been able to convey a little about why. Thanks for watching.